After saying adieu to Paris and making a pit stop in Hangzhou, I took a familiar pilgrimage back to Seoul, hoping to reestablish my roots and find solace in the city that stoked my culinary curiosities. I was whisked away from the glitzy lights of late-night haunts and the rhythmic shake of the shaker, pulled in by a different kind of allure, the soothing synergy of self-expression through pottery. I remember my first day attending a pottery class in Seoul, strolling into a traditionally adorned workshop with a heart full of trepidation, but a spirit ready to soak up every experience that laid before me. There was something enticing about the process, molding the clay, giving it form, imbuing my every emotion and story into these delicate objects that would last a lifetime. As I dipped my fingers into the cool, yielding clay, a nostalgia-induced warmth wrapped around my heart, a vivid flashback to a breezy summer afternoon in Paris where I first discovered the art of pottery. I could close my eyes and almost relive the moment when I, fascinated, watched the clay transforming, as if under a spell, taking form under my hands, mirroring the liveliness of a vivid cocktail turning from mere ingredients into a memory-intoxicating potion. Pottery, like concocting a cocktail, was a beautiful symphony of precise movements and nuanced touches, a sensory journey that stirred the depths of my soul. I could manipulate the clay, a lifeless lump of earth, and let my feelings take shape through it, as flutes, as cups, as vases. It was self-expression in its purest form. When these pieces dried and hardened, they bore the burden of every emotion I had breathed into them, a tangible testament to a bartender's narrative. Each sway of my hand, each pressure of my finger, each nip and tuck, embodied a part of me, a part of my joy, my sorrow, my dedication, my liberation, mirroring how a splash of spirit, a scoop of crushed ice, a dash of bitters, and a twist of orange— collectively brim in a glass to portray an artistically crafted cocktail narrative, a piece of me. Pottery was to me what mixology narrated. It was an artistic medium to capture my emotions, a canvas to color with my spirit. The humble pottery workshop in a narrow alley of soul became my sanctuary, a place where I could run wild with my imagination, a newfound leisure apart from my daily adventure with spirits. It was a cocoon where I could shed my worries, stress, and anxieties into the embrace of art, contouring a refuge from the demanding, fast-paced life of a bartender. Pottery beckoned me with its siren song, stirring the colors of a dormant passion, a connection I had nurtured while in Paris. It was there I discovered how clay, under the watchful eye and guiding hand, could transform into an extension of oneself, resonating with my heartbeat echoing with my thoughts, thriving and coming to life. Immersing myself in the delicate dance of clay and wheel, losing myself in the rhythmic swirl of the shapeless turning into something beautiful, it was an experience that brandished a sense of oneness with my being, striking an uplifting note in my otherwise chaotic life as a bartender. The raw, responsive clay reminded me of an eager spirit, waiting to be shaped and transformed under the expert touch of a mixologist reflecting my experience with the art of mixing drinks. Subtly manipulating the doughy morsel, I felt a sense of calmness diffusing into me, as if absorbing the tranquility of the pottery wheel's rhythm and the clay's gentle yielding to my touch. And then I saw it, the transformation of a nondescript lump into a piece of timeless art right under my fingers, just like how I mold nuanced flavors into a signature cocktail. Every ribbing onto the clay was akin to adding an ingredient into the mixer, perfecting the form, enhancing the flavor. The spinning wheel, the pliant clay, the rhythmic motion, and the anticipatory silence around as the potter's wheel spun, all reminded me of the hustle and bustle of my bartending life. And yet I discovered an entirely different kind of artistry in this serene environment. I cherished the sensory experience of the clay spinning under my hands, the slightly gritty texture, the cool softness, the exhilaration of watching a formless mass evolve into a form under my control. Every piece created reflected my journey, my emotions, and my vigor, just as every cocktail I mix encompasses a part of me, my creativity, my passion, and a touch of my spirit. The pottery under my hands was like the cocktails I served, each telling a tale, each evoking a powerful memory, a toast to the highs and lows of life, a swig of the mundane and the intriguing, a sip from the glass of my trials and triumphant victories. And in that pottery class, I wasn't merely crafting shapes out of clay, but was carving out parts of my soul, 
embedding stories into clay, and breathing life into inanimate matter. If bartending was my daring adventure, pottery was my grounding reality, an understated yet profound medium of self-expression. A symphony of kindred spirits. The art of shaping clay and creating cocktails both resonated deeply within me, binding my spirit and vision into one. A sense of déjà vu crept over me as I sauntered into the first pottery class in Seoul, simultaneously conjuring welcoming waves of nostalgia and intriguing hints of novelty. The hum of the pottery wheel, the crumbly, cool feel of the clay, that familiar smell of the earthen material all spiraled back memories from my stay in Paris. I remember a cushioned corner in Paris, a pottery nook in the midst of a bustling city, a tiny, tranquil slice of existence where my pliable senses dove into the pliable clay. My recollections from the pottery class I had attended in Paris clung to the edge of my conscious mind, threading together bittersweet strands of aesthetics, loneliness, and determination, paralleling my journey through Korea. While Paris wrapped me in a bear hug of glorious architecture, cuisine, and academics, the solitude spurring from my individual journey was as undeniable as my progress. Yet amid the intense culinary arts course, I found solace when my hands met clay, the two shaping a bond that would last beyond geographical confines. I remember struggling with the different spirits, bends in the liquor's nature that often left me feeling defeated. Yet I also remember the rallying resolve within me, the tenacity that spring back with every failure, bent on bringing to life my vision in class as well as pottery. As my hands wrestled with the clay, shaping and reshaping forms, I dug my heels in against failure, forcing the skeptics in my head to stand down until I mastered my craft. Eventually, amidst the whirlpool of emotions, my hands, muddy from clay, would move over the spinning wheel with newfound confidence, each glide brimming with soaring spirits and stubborn resolve. And with each successful creation, with each triumphant study in precise crafting, I felt a chunk of my insecurities dissolve, replaced with abiding pride in my personal growth. Each dab, squeeze, and curve carved into the clay was a testament to the labor and love, triumphs, and trials of my academic journey in Paris. While the culinary arts were an exploration of flavors and taste, pottery became an exploration of my inner self. It was like sending love letters to my future self, embedding parts of my soul into each creation, each a silent whisper about a girl learning, growing, and holding on to her dreams in a foreign land. Now, as I stood among aspirant potters in soul, my hands instinctively molded the soft clay, breathing life into it with an all-too-familiar rhythm and reverence. This pottery class was more than an escape from my mixology career. It was a stairway to my past, an echo of lessons learned, a gentle reminder of resilience against the odds, and identification of the strength within. It was a journey back to myself, tethering me to my roots while spiraling through a panorama of my life phases, from Seoul to Paris and back. And within each crafted piece, within the clay's journey from formless to beautiful under my hands, I was reminded of who I was, of how far I'd come and of the distances I was yet to conquer. As my fingers sank into the yielding clay during my first pottery class in Seoul, my mind darted back to a sun-drenched room in Paris. The peaceful silence enveloping the studio was a comforting echo of a similar tranquility I had encountered at the pottery nook in Paris, nestled amidst the culinary institutes and patisseries that colored my study at Le Cordon Bleu. The warren of memories threatened a deluge, each moment a piece of a fragmented mosaic resurrected from a past filled with triumphs, heartbreaks, and personal growth. I remembered the sea of unfamiliar faces in my culinary arts class, the cumbersome weight of unfamiliar kitchen utensils in my hands, and the unfamiliar alien city unfolding before me like an unending canvas. But amid the unfamiliarity, I found a friendly ally in pottery, something that grounded me, that provided a much-needed respite from the breathless pace of the culinary world. I remembered the pangs of loneliness, of being adrift in a city brimming with strangers. I was a stranger myself, struggling with my inadequacies, battling my inhibitions, and trying desperately to fit in. Nevertheless, it was the comforting rhythm of pottery, the soft whisperings of clay between my fingers, that became my refuge. The pottery class I attended in Seoul was like revisiting an old friend, a retreat back into a simpler time when self-discovery was still burgeoning. The dance of my fingers over the smooth, yielding clay brought back the echo of Paris, the echo of my journey, 
and the echo of the woman I had become during my time at Le Cordon Bleu. I'd look at the distorted images reflected on the glossy surface of the wet clay, and I'd see a more confident version of myself. I'd see a woman unafraid of her dreams, a woman who'd embraced challenges, a woman who'd learnt to ride the tide. Pottery allowed me to rediscover my love for the simple and earthly, a constant reminder of my grounding amidst the glamorous world of culinary finesse. Each piece of pottery I crafted in Seoul bore imprints of my journey, a testament to the evolution of a girl who was once lost to a woman with grounded dreams. Each piece told a story of resilience, growth, determination, and love. Each crafted piece was an intimate chronicle of my journey, a celebration of my triumphs, and a nod towards my future aspirations. The spin of the pottery wheel was synonymous with the wheels of time, spinning tales of my Paris days, binding memories and dreams, shaping clay and pulsating hopes, crafting pottery, and molding an aspiring bartender. Amid the constant bustling of soul's life, I found peace in the murmurs of spinning clay, in the echoes of Paris that sparked memories, leaving trails of a once unfamiliar city that had become part of my soul. By the time I had settled in Seoul, my pottery creation on that fine Monday in Seoul confirmed the coming of age of a newfound passion within myself. Every clay figurine, each misshapen glass, and all the pottery I crafted back in Hangzhou during my short summer spell weren't just pieces of earthenware. They were tangible memories, born out of the clay of my hometown, and nurtured by hands that, at some point, felt a bit lost in this grand tapestry of life. They were my private whispers of how I had changed, grown, and yet essentially remained the same, harboring a love for the earthy and rustic, even in a city blazing with neon lights. Here I was, miles away from home, yet the piercing taste of growing up in Hangzhou rang truer than ever. Each stroke of my thumb, every curve shaped by my fingers, brought with them recollections of the silky smooth porcelain teapots we used for our traditional Chinese tea rituals back home. Among the bustling anthill of soul, I found solace in the intimate dance of water, earth, and fire, elements that felt almost poetic in their simplicity, yet profound in their unity. As my hands fell in rhythm with the soft echo of the spinning wheel, my mind wandered towards that steamy summer afternoon back in Hangzhou, where I deftly molded a simple vase. I remember the feeling like an excited flutter dancing to an exhilarating rhythm within me, as the formless clay turned into a vase of such enchanting beauty. The subtle fragrance of clay, the pulsating echo of the wheel, brought with it a cascade of hidden emotions, tucked quite conveniently at the corners of my heart. At times it felt like the spinning wheel charted the course of my life, each moment hardened by experience, each rough edge smoothed by the trials, creating an unbroken chronicle of the woman I was slowly becoming. Often, as I stood over the wheel brimming with clay waiting to be molded, I realized I held in my hands a lump of lifeless clay one moment, and a glorious testament of creativity the next. It was indeed a vivid reminder of my own journey, where I was once a diffident girl standing on the threshold of a new life, and then suddenly had seen myself evolve into a woman passionate about weaving dreams around spirits and wines. Instead of using a canvas to paint my journey— I found comfort in the malleability and vulnerability of clay, where I could birth my tales into existence. My pottery narrated stories about my evolution, the same way my cocktails did. Integrating pieces of my journey into the very body of my pottery, I began to weave a beautiful tale of resilience, patience, and passion. Driven primarily by the rhythm of clay and the tempo of my heart, I allowed the memories of the past to shape my present, giving life to clay and breathing life into my soul. With each turn of the wheel, I found myself lost in the labyrinth of clay globules and toasted shards. I unveiled a while standing behind the sleek, polished counter, juggling spirits underneath the soft glimmers of bar lights. Exposure to pottery was not merely about self-expression and healing. It also led me to Hana, a pottery aficionado who later turned into a dear friend. While Seoul was bustling with life, the pottery class was my quiet sanctuary— where I met like-minded individuals like Hana, whose passion matched mine. An artist at heart, Hana sculpted her stories, her emotions into clay, breathing life into an otherwise lifeless mound. It was a sight that never ceased to intrigue me. The bond between us grew stronger with every spin of the potter's wheel, every stroke of our tools against the wet clay. 
We'd often lose ourselves in deep conversation while spinning clay on the wheel, the rhythmic thump-thump-thump of the spinning wheel in the background echoing the pulse of our burgeoning friendship. Our shared affinity for pottery and our mutual respect for each other's individuality allowed us to foster a relationship that transcended the clay and the pottery studio, slowly spilling into the other spheres of life. Each pottery class with Hana became more than just a learning experience. It was an orchestra of joy and kinship, a rhythm we both happily swayed to. Over a period, our most profound conversations unfolded against the backdrop of spinning wheels and molded clay, our laughter melting into the soft, squishy noise of the clay between our fingers. The tranquil, focused atmosphere of the pottery class was a stark contrast from the lively chatter and clinking of glasses at the bar, yet each of these spaces held a different key to my identity a mixologist, and an aspiring potter. Meeting Hana broadened my view towards friendship as a whole. It taught me that friendships aren't just about shared interests or similar personalities. Sometimes they are about contrasting yet complementary spirits coming together. With pottery class, I never just walked away with mud-stained hands and a new piece of handmade art. I always carried pieces of compelling conversations and new perspectives that Hana and I had shared. As we explored the nuances of pottery— we explored each other's worlds, empathizing with triumphs and tribulations. Pottery, thus, became a bonding exercise, cementing a unique friendship between two creative souls. We found solace in clay, transforming amorphous blobs into graceful forms, making the mundane magical. The raw, unhindered nature of pottery reflected in our friendship, too. A raw, organic bond deeply intertwined with strokes of creativity and painted with memories of shared laughter and heart-to-heart -heart conversations— Amid the chaos of life, pottery class became our meeting ground, a place where our lives twirled and swirled, just like the clay on our pottery wheels. Hana and pottery, thus, became an indispensable part of my journey, each grounding me when life threatened to spin out of control. Pottery wasn't just an ordinary hobby. It became a therapeutic outlet that mirrored my transition from heartbreak to a new sense of calmness. Whenever I felt overwhelmed or alone, the spinning wheel would bring me back to my senses, grounding me in the moment. Softly kneading the clay, watching it take various forms under my fingertips, deepened my understanding of transience. Just like the clay, life too reshapes and molds us in various ways. It's enriching to realize that a hobby so physically engaging had the power to fuel my mental calmness, working as an excellent antidote to my brewing anxiety. The intense yet soothing focus required to mold the clay fragments into a coherent shape gave me a sense of control, subtly easing my neurotic tendencies. In those hours spent crafting pottery, I wasn't just creating ceramics. I was also rebuilding my confidence, replacing the insecurities and self-doubt with a more positive outlook towards life. Nurturing the clay into a particular form has always been an art sheathed in patience and resilience. Sometimes the clay was unyielding, resisting the very form I intended. Sometimes it just collapsed under my ambition and overbearing touch. Sounds a lot like life, doesn't it? But that's where the beauty lies, in picking up those collapsed pieces, starting over, gently nurturing and molding until the clay surrenders to the shape I visualize. Much like crafting myself, recovering from failed relationships, dusting off the falls, and consistently striving to become a better version of myself. When I pour over the potter's wheel, it's almost like a metaphorical narrative of my life. My life's experiences, my hopes, my dreams, my values, all inextricably intertwined with the clay that morphs under my fingers. It's a physical representation of my emotions at that very moment, raw, unedited, genuine, the form directly influenced by whether I've had a lighthearted day or a draining shift at the bar. Crafting my clay, I discovered, is like crafting my soul. Smooth yet textured, sturdy yet vulnerable. Each piece echoed stories of my laughter, my tears, my fears, my triumphs. A tangible embodiment of my spirit, a silent yet eloquent testimony of my journey. For me, each piece of pottery is not just a pretty display. It's a slice of my life that I've breathed into clay, a part of my story, my identity. Presenting a thought, a memory, a mood in the language of clay was more than therapeutic. It was almost transcendental. Pottery didn't just provide me a canvas to express my creativity. It was a transformative journey, where each piece crafted brought me a step closer to understanding my tumultuous emotions and rousing aspirations, and above all, 
a step closer to myself.